We play and call it work. Hey everybody, Matthew here from AnyWargaming.com and welcome to the first of our vlog series for Horus Heresy. So excited for this. We're just going to be starting off with a few very simple videos as miniatures come in before we actually start having miniatures painted and ready for battle reports. And so these will just all be available for free just to kind of build up the hype before we can actually start playing it, which I'm really, really excited for, especially because I just played a battle report against um, Alex from California yesterday where he brought his word bearers, beautifully painted by uh, Den of Imagination 30K. And seeing that just made me really, really excited to start playing. And so you're gonna see that battle report probably sometime next week. Anyways, I'm gonna be going through, each person is going to be making vlogs just to show the stuff that as they arrive and to talk about their army a little bit. So this is really just informal and I'm just going to just talk about whatever comes to my mind when it comes to these things to, and, and hopefully then you can start to interact with us and post comments and questions below or suggestions. I, Horus Heresy is totally new to all of us. And believe me when I say that when you start opening up these books that it can be a little overwhelming at first. And by a little, I mean a lot. And that's for somebody who's been playing 40K for years now. So at least I have a, a grasp of the rules. But then 30K just throws in so many new names and formations and all this other stuff that it's just a, that it, it took a while for me to figure out what, exactly what I was looking for. So to start off, if you hadn't already watched a re-roll about the Horus Heresy that the guys put up a couple weeks back, uh, each of us chose a starting faction. There was no specific rule if we had to choose but we wanted somewhat of a mix of ones that would turn traitor and ones that would stay loyal. And obviously no two people could choose the same one because that would defeat the purpose of trying to get variety. So I chose salamanders because I just love the salamander fluff. I like that they're actually one of the few things in the 40k universe that could be considered a good guy. Because uh, the Imperium overall doesn't feel like a good guy. They did, they're not very kind to their citizens. They're kind of a, a dictator, oh they are a dictatorship with all sorts of bureaucracy that is basically the whole of humanity is more important than any part of it. Um, ironically, it sounds a lot like the Tao and their greater good. Essentially the same idea. And most of them just don't care about, even, even ones that are good, if you read the Horus Heresy books, there's even instances where you can see how little the Space Marines care about regular people. But the Salamanders seem to break that mold. And even when they're off duty, they live amongst their citizens of the people on their, their homeworld of Nocturne. And that kind of sets them apart, that they actually go into the society and they, they help lead it and they help build it. Whereas a lot of other Space Marines will just retreat to their fortresses or to their ships and for meditation and training and kind of stay apart from their, their home worlds and the people that are on it, viewing them as just separate and maybe not as important. So I really like that. I like for once having a good guy, considering that they started playing Tyranids and Necrons. Tau, of course, can be seen either way. Um, but just, just enjoy that. And so really want to really resonate with that. And so down here, if you want to take a look, I've got my very first ever Salamanders model, which is of course their Primarch Vulcan. And this was painted by uh, Awaken Realms. Just got this yesterday, actually. It is gorgeous, absolutely stunning. And I love it. And I want to play with it right now. And so that's my very first one. I'm going to talk a bit about the stuff that I'm starting off, just how I'm starting to build the army and then where we might go from there. We have all our other Primarchs right here as well, that just, just to show you, show them off, we got Horus, Her Horus Heresy, Horus and Mortarian, who also were painted by Awakened Realms that we just got yesterday. Uh, and then we've got um, Fol or, sorry, Angron and Fulgrim. And uh, those ones we've had for a while. So they just, we just happened, I just pulled them out just to show them off. But uh, Horus, of course, will be Dave's because he's going to be doing Sons of Horus. It just seems fitting that he would choose the, the main Chaos faction. Uh, Mortarian's nobody's. Uh, that's Death Guard, and nobody's chosen that one yet. And same thing with Angron. Nobody's chosen his faction. And then we have Fulgrim, who's, doing em who's Emperor's Children, of course. And uh, Lee, our painter, is actually going to be collecting that. So you'll be able to see them in battle reports, although it'll be probably not as often as the other ones, because he's not a content producer. And then we've got, if I remember this correctly, see if I can get it right, uh, Leland, who's holding the camera, is doing Imperial Fists. We've got uh, Steve, who's doing Iron Warriors, and he'll be able to do a vlog shortly because he's got his models in, whereas Imperial Fists, uh, we're still waiting on the models. We just ordered them this week. And we've got uh, Quirk, who's doing... Oh, I've, Iron Hands? Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Legion. Legion. Duh. Oh, right. Alpharius. Uh, yeah. The, 
I am Alpharius one, that's right. He's doing the Alpha Legion. And Alpha Legion's kind of a neutral one. They technically turn chaos, but I think in the end they're kind of they're kind of in the middle. And so we have Sons of Horus, who definitely turned traitor, Emperor's uh, sorry, the Wow, brain just went dead, Fulgrims. Emperor's children, who definitely turned traitor. And then you have Salamander's Imperial Fists, who both stay um, loyal. And then we have Iron Warriors, and I believe Iron Warriors turn traitor as well. It's a lot of lore I'm trying to keep all in my head, so you can look forward to all of that. Anyways, I want to talk just to, for a few minutes of what I decided to build for my initial 1,500 to 2,000 point list. Uh, obviously, I'm just starting with some basics. I really want to make it thematic. That's kind of the, the direction I've told all the guys is that we're, we really, because essentially Horus Heresy right now is Space Marines versus Space Marines, that can get boring really quickly if everybody just tries to min-max their armies. But if we really go to the fluff of our armies and the way that it looks like it's meant to be built, then we can get some variety in there. And so salamanders, of course, love fire and they love melta. They love that kind of stuff. And so I felt that even though it might be at a disadvantage to have lots of flamers, uh, because that's more a close-up close kind of thing, I really wanted to stay with that theme. And so what I don't have here, because I have a Forge World order that we just received yesterday, are the things that I've already sent out to some commission painters, and that includes a bunch of tactical marines, and also the fire drakes and the pyro class. Those are the unique units to the salamanders. The fire drakes are the basically, well, they're terminators, but in this case, I'm doing the thunder hammer storm shield terminators. And then the pyro class are like a specialist team that all have flamers. Um, and so they're just obviously meant to get up and close and personal in your face. And then, I'll, then I have the base tactical marines and I've got a praetor being painted as well. A couple praetors actually being painted one Terminator and one non, just, just the ones that come kit in Forge World. And so that'll give me my HQ, some troops, and then the Fire Drakes and Pyro class, of course, will be there to fill different roles. The Fire Drakes, the Terminators, can be actually taken as a bodyguard for a Praetor or for Vulcan himself. So sometimes you'll see them as that, sometimes you'll just see them as their normal elite choice. And they count as troops for objectives. So in the case if you're playing six, if you're playing Horus Heresy, then they can actually score objectives. And if you're playing 7th edition 40k with them, then they actually have objective secured, which is kind of cool for a very, very resilient Terminator group. Um, and so those are being painted up right now, along with a Rhino and the Contemptor Dreadnought as well, because Forge World actually has a, a Salamander iconic, 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 Salamander Contemptor Dreadnought, thank you. And so that's being painted up with a bunch of different weapon options as well. So just basic stuff. But then, when we ordered Dave's Sons of Horus stuff, which he'll be doing a vlog on sometime soon, I decided to throw in a few extra stuff to help my guys actually get into battle. So right here, not this one, uh, right here. This, not that there's much to look at, it's a big bag of resin. This is a Space Marine Spartan Assault Tank. Now this thing is awesome. It's got uh, two quad last cannons, and so we're looking at four twin link last cannon shots, but most importantly, it can it can transport a buttload of guys right into combat, just like a Land Raider, it's an assault vehicle. I thought it's very appropriate for Salamanders to want to be able to, to tank forward. They, they, it feels like Salamanders should be played in like a slow and purposeful, heavy kind of way, even though you totally could do them however you want. That just feels like the way I want to do them. And so putting guys into vehicles will help kind of mitigate that a bit by allowing them to at least get delivered closer, because obviously you don't want to just foot slog it across the board. And then, a little less interested in that, but still important, we have uh, three rhinos. These are the Mark 1C Demos pattern rhinos, so they look really cool. And then I've got the salamanders, rhino doors, and front plate to make them look, well, more salamander-ish. And then finally, I just had to grab this one. We have the Demos pattern predator in furnace. This is essentially a predator with a bunch of flamers. So think of it kind of like the bail predator for the Blood Angels in 40k, and you've, you've got a very similar idea. None of this stuff is unique to Salamanders. Really, most of the, the Special Legions only have two or three things that are unique to them, plus a few named characters. Uh, so most of them, it's just uh, how you play them, and then there's certain ways that you can build the armies that allow certain things to have upgrades or, or special bonuses. For example, Salamanders, anything that's Salamanders, which is everything that'll be in my army, mm -hmm. tanks, infantry, whatever, they get plus one strength to all their flamers. Uh, whereas in 40k, salamanders get, uh, the, essentially their flamers become twin-linked in a sense. 
uh, so that's just one of many things. And I'm also plus one toughness against flamers rather than feel no pain against flamers that we get in 40k. So very, it's, it's everything you have to kind of relearn, but the basic idea is still there. So that's where I'm at right now. This, I think this brings me up a bit above 2,000 points, not including Vulcan himself. He's about 500 points, and so that obviously brings me right up. And this is just a start. It feels, it's so funny building a 30k army. It's so much different than building 40k. 40k, I can, I can order four or 5,000 points right now and just get started on it. This, you have to be a lot more careful because it's a lot more expensive. Uh, thankfully, with the Betrayal of Kelp coming out and of what seems to be Games Workshop's future of supporting Horus Heresy, ironically, that means that buying from Games Workshop will be cheaper, which it just feels weird to say that, hey, now I can get a deal. Because uh, typically people complain about Games Workshop's prices, and for good reason, they're very expensive. But not as expensive as Forge World, so getting a lot of that stuff in there will allow more people to be able to get to the game, which is really cool, because I think Horus Heresy has this really rich background and fluff that'll make for very interesting videos and battle reports. And it also scales down a bit of the power level of the game, too. It's definitely not as powerful as all the new 40k stuff. So it allows us to kind of retract, and even though we're using current edition rules, we're almost using like a 5th edition power level, which can just give some variety to our battle reports as well. That's all i got to talk about right now. I'd love to hear your comments, your questions, your suggestions. I will read them, because there might be things that I'm missing, or ideas that you can give me that'll, that'll make me build my army in a certain way. Or if you have questions, and I'd love to be able to answer those. I will be posting in the comments section as well, so I'll be replying there, as well as in future vlogs. So stay tuned for more Her Horus Heresy coverage, and uh, some more vlogs, and eventually once we get our armies up and running, battle reports and everything else, and happy wargaming.